is up nerd friends welcome back to the nerd bench this week we're going to take a look once again at the tunalizer and compare two just stock 17.5 turn motors one of the cool things about the tunalizer is that it can not only analyze the tune that you put on a motor but if you have like just stocks that are non-tunable there's no adjustable timing you could have maybe two or three of these guys compare them and figure out which one might be better suited for different conditions give you more rpm more torque whatever the case may be so the auto te motor test that the tunalizer does allows you to compare some stats and we're going to talk about how to use those stats to see which motor may do better in different conditions so I'm going to open these up and we'll get right to it. All right, so there you have it. Two freshly squeezed Just Stock 17.5 G 2.1 motors. These are the non-adjustable style of spec motors that are popular around the country for various I guess you'd say standardized classes, spec classes, stuff like that. And as any good racer tends to do, they want to know if they can get a little more out of something or if something's worn out. So a couple things that the Tunalizer is good for is taking your brand new motor, testing it, getting that information, and that way you'll be able to compare that later on down the road. Or in the case like this where you have two, you can try to figure out which one's better or worse. So Let's say you want to save one for later and competition's not so stiff. I don't need to bust up my good motor yet type of thing. So uh, with the tunalizer, not only does it analyze the tune of your motor, it acts as a OTA. This can work to do to speed control tuning. It has built-in Bluetooth connection. You can plug the double-ended harness into the side, plug that into the speed control, and you can do speed control tuning through the HW Link V2 app. This port also acts as a speed control tester. So if you need to do bench top tuning and you don't have a radio receiver, you can plug your speed control in here and use the knob to do calibration and basic uh, speed control functionality uh, also. Uh, the Tunalizer does two cell to four cell input and it has two different test voltages. It'll do 3.7 or 7.4 volts so you can test at one cell voltage or two cell voltage basically. Uh, it does work with censored and sensorless motors. With sensorless motors, obviously, you're not going to get the uh, timing and bells information, but it does show you the RPM and the rest of that fun stuff. And it does also work with non-hobby wing motors as well. You can get basic information out of regular censored motors or sensorless motors also. It doesn't have to be a hobby wing motor. So that's the basics on the Tunalizer. We have other videos about this guy, so we'll put a link for those down below if you want to see some of that other fun stuff. But for the most part today, we're going to be exploring the auto motor test. There's a manual motor test and, like I said, the throttle output for speed control testing. But all of that in another video. I do want to mark these so I can tell the difference. So this guy, I'm going to put one dot there. And this guy, I'm going to put uh, two dots there. So we have motor one and motor two, real easy. All right, so with everything connected correctly, all you do is tap auto motor test, hold on to the motor so it doesn't roll away. I have this set to the 3.4 voltage test just to keep RPMs lower, noise down. But you can do it both ways. You can actually test the motor at two voltages and get an even bigger data pool to look at. Uh, but you see, you get your test results. The current that it drew during the test run the kv of the motor which is your rpm your actual measured end bell timing as well as the individual sensors themselves and then on the second page this is the fun stuff the deviation the symmetry and the hall signal deviation these are going to be the average of the difference of the sensors this is going to be how equally charged your rotor is and then the hall signal deviation is the strength that it reads so each of the sensors there's three sensors in there this is the the, the discrepancy or the deviation of their signal strength in the end the lower these numbers are the better that the motor was going to generally perform compared to one that has higher numbers and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these numbers and i'm going to punch them all into a spreadsheet and then we're going to compare the two motors uh and see which so one we like. i punched that all into the old master spreadsheet over there and now we're going to hook up motor number two and do a test run so hold the motor hit auto test and away it goes And pretty similar. Let's uh, scroll down. We we'll see this side, a lot better numbers as far as the results go. They're significantly lower. So we're going to say that probably motor number two might be our champion. But we're going to punch this all into the spreadsheet. So these test runs 
are a single pull. And generally, if you run the test again immediately, some of the numbers are going to change a little bit, the RPM and some of the amp draw stuff. But the main core numbers, the unveiled deviation, seem to be pretty consistent. So we'll back out of here. This is, All right, so this is still motor number two. We're going to run the test again and just see what happens to the numbers as a comparison. Alrighty, so I'm going to go plug these into the old spreadsheet. And I guess for the sake of the data points, we should test motor number one again. Uh, motor number one again, and we're going to hit the auto motor test. Alright, so there's those numbers. Let's see, I think... Th Memory serves, that's all still pretty close to the same, and these look about the same. I was just looking at the spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go punch oh, these into the Apologies screen. for this sweet recording of my mouse and my screen here. But this is the data, and I moved it around a little bit. I made motor one, you know, next to motor one, and motor two next to motor two, so it was a little easier to look at. And one of the things that you see is that the the deviation numbers here are much lower than these are, so consistently those remain the same through both of the runs, and the RPM does change ever so slightly on both of them by a handful of RPM, as well does the current. And those small deviations kind of account for each other at the same time. Now, something that I've added to my spreadsheet that is a metric that I use as just another base guide, so to speak. We already know the RPM of the motor, we know the amp draw. This allows you to have another metric that is your RPM per amp, so to speak. Higher sometimes is going to be better than lower, lower sometimes is going to be better than higher, so this lets you have another metric to track, and it's just dividing the KV of the motor by the amp draw of the motor to give another idea. If you so, were to have uh, two of these two motors, which one of them is going to be better? Uh, overall, because the core of the motor here shows that these numbers are lower i'm going to think that this guy is probably going to hold up better long term after they get some runs on them what i say by that is that you know bearings break in rotors heat cycle and things start to change around a little well i hope you like tunalizer videos because there's going to be a lot more coming about the hobby wing tunalizer i have some more just stock motors to do comparisons on I have some of the new G4 motors to do comparisons on, and I have some modified motors to do some comparisons on as well. We are going to do some deep diving into the tunalizer and get a handle on what you guys want to know about this and what it can do to help your maintenance as well as your race program for more than just motor comparisons, but over time. So I've got these motors now logged. I'm going to put better markings on them than dots, maybe a sticker and a number, and run these guys a couple times, and we'll come back and compare them and see if they change i'm going to run these for a while hopefully we started running a two-wheel drive uh, class down at the peacock pit so i think some 17.5 motors might be perfect for that sort of stuff and then we can get some uh, lifespan testing on what happens to these over time and how those numbers change i do like to remind everybody every episode that we do have a podcast it's called rc stuff each and every episode we give away free rc stuff all you have to do to enter to win is listen to an episode. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in to another fresh episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you next time.